Hello everybody, and welcome back to another 5 Nights at Freddy's video. As I'm sure that you all know, when a game is being developed, it is almost inevitable that not everything that was planned out will make it into the finished product, and that is no exception with the 5 Nights at Freddy's series. So, to celebrate the second anniversary of my channel, I am going to go through all of the removed and unused content from all 11 Five Nights at Freddy's games, whether it be from the game's files, trailers, or even teasers. When going through each game, I will first cover pre-release content and then cover unused content found within the game's files. So, let's get started. Starting with the original Five Nights at Freddy's, the first piece of unused content is a slightly different design for the animatronics endoskeletons. This early design can be seen in the trailer and the steam green light. Comparing this to Endo-01's final design, there are quite a few big differences between the two. The early endoskeleton has triangular, metallic looking teeth, red irises, and rectangular nostrils while Endo 01 has cube-shaped, human-looking teeth, blue irises, and lax nostrils entirely. Despite Endo 01 eventually being given blue irises, in Help Wanted, we can see that he actually does have red irises when his eyeballs are removed. Moving on to the game's first trailer, we can see Bonnie running down the hallway and removing his mask to reveal his endoskeleton face. He, of course, never does either of these two things in the actual game, and was instead given the ability to teleport between rooms. As we all know, Foxy is actually the animatronic who runs down the hallway in the game, instead of Bonnie. Scott Cawthon would later confirm that he had shown Bonnie running in the trailer in order to keep Foxy as a surprise for when the game was released. Speaking of Foxy, he was actually not Scott Cawthon's first idea for the game's fourth animatronic. While deciding on the species of the fourth animatronic, some of his earlier ideas had included a wolf and a beaver. The beaver was, in fact, originally planned as the game's main antagonist before Cawthon replaced it with Freddy Fazbear in order to avoid comparisons towards his previous game Chipper and Sons, Lumbergo whose negative reception had encouraged him to create Five Nights at Freddy's. This may be the same reason why the beaver was rejected for the game's fourth animatronic as well. The wolf was rejected as well, and Cawthon finally decided on a fox animatronic, resulting in the creation of Foxy the Pirate. Ironically, Cawthon would actually later introduce wolf and beaver animatronics into the franchise later on with Twisted Wolf from Other Twisted Ones and L Chip from A Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. On the subject of scrapped animatronics, shortly before the release of Five Nights at Freddy's 2, Scott Cawthon confirmed that he would actually include some of the first game's scrapped animatronics in the game. The most common assumption is that he was referring to Balloon Boy and the Puppet, as they are the only new animatronics in the second game who are not based on Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, or Foxy. However, it is also possible that Cawthon was actually referring to the aforementioned Wolf and Beaver animatronics, even though there is absolutely no mention of either of those two animals in the second game. Not many people know this, but the first Five Nights at Freddy's actually has two trailers. The second trailer shows off gameplay and, here we can see the game in its fairly early development stages. In the trailer, the East Hall is labeled as Backstage, the East Hall Corner is labeled as W. Hall Corner in addition to the actual West Hall Corner, and the game overall looks much more pixelated than the final version. Of course, this trailer was only showcasing an early build of the game, and all of the cameras were labeled correctly when the game was released. Next, we have two ideas that were scrapped during the creation of the game's main antagonist. Freddy Fazbear. Originally, Freddy was going to be named Freddy Bear. Evidently, his finalized name may have been a last-minute decision, as the game's Kickstarter and Steam pages still referred to him by his original name. The other scrapped idea for Freddy was that he would only ever leave the show stage if the player ran out of power. Of course, this was changed during development, since Cawthon believed that the game's main antagonist should have more relevance. 
which led to Freddy's actual behavior of keeping himself hidden in the shadows while he gradually creeps towards your office. One last piece of unused content for the original Five Nights at Freddy's, outside of the actual game, is within the screenshots used for the game's Steam page. In these screenshots, we can see that the night texts are absent for every night, except for night 5. I'm unsure if this was simply an error or if night texts were a last minute addition to the game. Moving past pre-release unused content, let's take a look at some unused assets that can still be found in the game's files. First of all, Five Nights at Freddy's was originally planned to feature a live system. As to how the system would have worked, Either you would restart at the previous hour and be sent back to the beginning of the night after running out of lives, or you would restart at the beginning of the night and be sent back to night 1 after running out of lives. In the game's files, you can even find textures for the lives counter and a stick figure that would appear next to the counter. The MFA files label this figure as Tiny Man. Another change made to the game was the map of the pizzeria. As we can see from this beta map. The camera buttons were originally going to be circles with translucent cones that would indicate your field of vision, before they were replaced with simple squares. The only other difference is that some cameras were placed in slightly different positions, such as the backstage camera originally being placed on the back of the door, or the kitchen camera being placed on the far right of the room. The only other piece of unused content from the original Five Nights at Freddy's is that some files from the demo were left in the full game's files, such as the encouragement to purchase the full game after completing the demo. Moving on to Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the first thing that we will look at is the teaser depicting Foxy and Mangle behind the curtain of Pirate's Cove. There are two small details in this teaser that were cut from the game. First of all, we can see that Mangle actually has a hook, possibly implying that Scott Cawthon had originally planned for her to be a normal toy animatronic before he decided to make her as mangled as possible. Secondly, Foxy is shown in his appearance from the first game, but with glowing, black eyes. This implies that either Foxy was originally planned to appear in his normal form as opposed to his withered form, or that this teaser was released before Cawthon had modeled withered Foxy and that normal Foxy was just used as a placeholder. Next, we have the teaser that introduces us to Withered Foxy and the Freddy Mask. What is interesting about this teaser is not that the Freddy Mask is being used to deter Withered Foxy, a character who is well known for being resistant to the mask, but it's actually that the mask and the flashlight are being used at the same time. This could imply that, originally, you would be able to use the mask and the flashlight at the same time, but this was removed because it would make the game too easy. I'm unsure if this next feature was just created specifically for the trailer or if it was actually planned to be in the game, but the second game's trailer features an extra line from Phone Guy that doesn't appear in the actual game. Hello? 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 Uh, well if you're hearing this then chances are you've made a very poor career choice. The final unused feature, outside of the files, is in some pre-release screenshots for the game. In these images, we can see that the flashlight text, that usually appears above the battery indicator, was originally not featured. Of course, this was added in before the game was released. Moving on to unused features within the game's files, just like the first game, leftover textures from the demo and for a planned lives system can still be found in the second game's files. The lives system likely would have worked the same way as the planned lives system from the first game, before it was cut. Originally, Scott Cawthon planned to include a toxicity meter that would fill up if the player kept the Freddy mask equipped for too long, eventually causing a game over once completely filled. Although this mechanic was scrapped, the leftover texture for the meter can still be found in the files. One rather unusual leftover sprite is one that depicts part of a human skull, with upper teeth and something black streaming from the right eye, possibly tears or a crack in the skull. It is unknown what this sprite was intended to be used for, but the MFA files label it as Mike, possibly as a reference to Mike Schmidt, the night guard from the first game. 
The next two unused sprites reveal that Oichiko and the puppet were originally planned to appear in the office. Since the MFA files labeled Oichiko's texture as Chikalukatu, it is likely that she was originally planned to function similarly to Toy Bonnie, and that she would slide into the office for a few seconds upon leaving the vents. The puppet's texture is listed as puppet in office suggesting that he was originally planned to appear in the office in a similar fashion to the withered animatronics and toy freddy interestingly this texture depicts the puppet with the same handle and strings that can be seen on several drawings and when the puppet is about to leave the prize corner this could imply that the puppet's handle was attached to a conveyor belt in the ceiling explaining how the puppet could move through the pizzeria despite not possessing any feet however this is never shown in any forms of Five Nights at Freddy's 2. The minigames depict the puppet as flowing in the air, while Help Wanted shows a tipped owing towards the night guard. The final unused texture for Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is a close-up of the puppet's face. This is actually the final frame of the puppet's attack animation but zoomed in and without any pupils. I honestly think that the puppet's angry expression looks very scary, and I really like the way that it is handled, as it can only be seen by looking at the puppet from above. As for this texture, it is unclear what it would have been used for. Perhaps it was going to be one of the hallucinations of the puppet that can appear in the main hall after the puppet has left the prize corner. Moving on to Five Nights at Freddy's 3, the first detail that was removed from the game can be found in the I Am Still Here teaser. This was the teaser where we were first introduced to Springtrap, who has a slightly different head design here than he did in the actual game. The only noticeable difference is that, in this teaser, he has sharper, blood-stained, more canine-like teeth, compared to the cleaner, more block-shaped teeth that his final model has. The next scrapped feature isn't actually to do with the game, but is actually centered around how the game was going to be teased. Brightening up Phantom Balloon Boy's teaser would reveal the number 10, which went unexplained until during Five Nights at Freddy's World's development. During this time, Scott Cawthon revealed that Phantom Balloon Boy's teaser was actually going to be the start of a round of teasers that counted down from 10 to 1 before the game was released. However, Cawthon released the game early, leading to this plan being scrapped, save for one final, unnumbered teaser showcasing Phantom Chico and Phantom Foxy. The final piece of pre-release content for Five Nights at Freddy's 3 is an early version of the monitor map, which can be seen in several pre-release screenshots that were used for the game's Steam page. In this early version of the map, the buttons for playing audio decoys and toggling between the camera systems have not been implemented yet. While it is possible that the vent system had not been implemented into the game yet, the audio decoys can still be seen being used in these screenshots. Moving on to cut content in the files, just like its predecessors, Five Nights at Freddy's 3 was initially planned to feature a live system, using the same textures as the first two games. This would be the last time that lives were planned and scrapped for a Five Nights at Freddy's game, so thankfully I won't have to repeat this over and over again. Another feature that Five Nights 3 shares with its predecessors is leftover demo textures in the full game's files. In case you are wondering, all of the demo textures are very similar, with them encouraging you to play the full game. That is why I am skimming over them quite quickly, to avoid repetition. Interestingly, all of the puppet's textures from the second game can be found in the third game's files, including the scrapped close-up of its face. Since the Phantom Puppet does not have its burnt appearance on Camera 8, it is possible that it was originally planned to look identical to the normal puppet, and that its assets would have been reused from the second game. This may be likely, considering how the Phantom Puppet behaves identically to the puppet in Night 4's cutscene in the second game. However, it is also possible that these textures may have been planned to be used in a cutscene of sorts. Another unused texture within the game's files is a button labeled a seal vent. It is fairly reasonable to assume that this button was going to be used for sealing the vents, before it was replaced with double-clicking the vent cameras. 
The final unused texture for Five Nights 3 is a Night 7 texture, proving that the game was originally planned to have 7 nights. It is unknown why the game's length was cut down to 6 nights, although it is possible that it was cut down because the game's plot was already completed by Night 6 and nothing else could be added without going past the Fazbear's Fright Fire. Moving on to Five Nights at Freddy's 4, the first thing that was cut from the game was Nightmare Foxy's tongue. As evidenced by his teaser and the game's menu screen, Nightmare Foxy was originally planned to have a long, metallic tongue, but that detail was cut from his finalized design. During his interview with Dorco, Scott Cawthon revealed that he removed Nightmare Foxy's tongue because he felt that it made Nightmare Foxy far less scarier than he had hoped. In the teaser for Nightmare Fredbear, he is shown with a grayscale color scheme, rather than the golden color scheme that he has in-game. I'm unsure if this is how Cawthon originally planned for Nightmare Fredbear to look or if this was only used specifically for this teaser. It is also possible that this darker color scheme may have been used to tease Nightmare, since he is the only Nightmare animatronic to not get their own teaser. When paying attention to Plush Trap's teaser, you can notice that he has a slightly different design than he does in the actual game. Comparing the teaser to his actual design, the first design has slightly sharper teeth, thicker eye shadows, and is a slightly more saturated shade of green. However, many of these things may just be caused by the darker lighting of the teaser. One final scrapped feature from a teaser is found within Nightmare Mangle's teaser. Here, we can see Nightmare Mangle hanging from the ceiling, similarly to regular Mangle and Phantom Mangle, even though we never actually see Nightmare Mangle crawling on the walls or ceiling in-game. It is possible that she may have been planned to appear like this in the hallways, because we never actually see her in the hallways either. Also, as we can see in the teaser, Nightmare Mangle originally had several wires dangling from her body, which were removed from her finalized design. Moving on to cut content within the actual files, the first asset is an unused chapter text. This may have been planned for either the beginning of the nights or the beginning of the minigames. As we all know, you can get stars on the title screen for completing certain challenges, but there is actually an animated star in the files. As for what it would have been used for, it could have been planned to appear once you get all 10 static stars, but its true purpose has not been revealed yet. Finally, and just like the previous games, leftovers from the demo can still be found in the full version of Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Before we move on to the next game, I would like to mention that I think that the demo ending for Five Nights 4 looks very effective, with a menacing tease of Nightmare Fredbear. Moving on to Five Nights at Freddy's World. Unlike the previous games, there is actually no cut content within any teasers, only within the trailer, pre-release screenshots, and the actual game. Starting with the trailer, during the shot of the overworld, we can see an unused sprite of Freddy walking diagonally. While you can walk diagonally in the actual game, there isn't a unique sprite for it. Also, in the trailer, we can see early versions of the Mechrab and prototype enemies. Here, the Mechrabs are golden instead of pink, and the prototypes are yellow and purple instead of grey and black. Commonly, the characters from World are referred to as the Adventure Animatronics. However, they are never actually referred to as that in-game, even though their copyrights have the phrase Adventure version. The final two pre-release changes can be found in screenshots on IndieDB. First of all, in the image showing the fight with Brow Boy, we can see that Shadow Freddy originally had the move Pizza Wheel 2 before it was replaced with Escape Key. Secondly, we can see that there was an unused chip referred to as Slow Start enemies, which would have likely been used to delay the enemy's attacks at the start of a battle. Moving on to unused content within the game itself, 
The first thing to mention is the 2D overworld that the game was originally released with. Originally, the game's overworld was composed entirely of 2D sprites, which was one of the biggest criticisms of World when it was first released. When Cawthon re-released the game, the overworld was completely redesigned with 3D models, which looks much better and is more accurate to the trailers. However, one thing that the 3D overworld removed was the be right back sign that would appear in between visiting DD. Speaking of DD, there is an unused animation of a swimming turtle in the files, which would have presumably functioned as another obstacle in DD's fishing hole. Interestingly, this turtle was actually taken from one of Scott Cawthon's earlier games, Slumberfish. There are signs that world was originally planned to have a nice themed area to explore as the OSD contains a piece of music that is never used in the actual game. This track is labeled Dice Cave, indicating that an ice cave would have originally appeared in the game before the idea was scrapped and likely replaced with dusting fields, which is covered with snow. In the files, there also exists an earlier design for Brow Boy, who appears as a boss in the Pinwheel Circus. This early design is very similar to the anime Ball Boy, but in Brow Boy's colors and with a unibrow. One of the most interesting cut features of Five Nights at Freddy's World, in my opinion, is an unused poison attack called Toxic Song. As to who this would have been assigned to, it is likely that it would have been used by one of the Phantom Animatronics, since they primarily utilize poison attacks. A likely candidate is Phantom Freddy, since he is the only Phantom to be a singer. However, it is also possible that the move may have been planned for Mangle or Springtrap, since their fixed forms, Funtime Foxy and Spring Bonnie, are the only two animatronics with the move Cosmic Song, indicating that the Toxic Song may have functioned similar to that move, but with poisonous effects added. Speaking of poison attacks, poison was originally planned to appear as an ailment, similarly to weakness and slowness. While this ailment was cut, its textures can still be found in the files. Another unused feature was an alternate animation for the cupcake, where it bobs up and down. Interestingly, this animation is grouped in the files with the actual cupcake animation, presumably to stop it after the cupcake bobs down once, before update 2. The character selection menu featured the text party creation at the top of the screen. This was removed in update 2 because the extra character o meant that there was not more room for the text. This is very similar to the cut custom knight text in ultimate custom knight. In addition to a cut move, there was also a red chip removed from the game. Although the chip itself cannot be found in the files, we can still find the texture for unlocking it. This chip is called curse haunting, implying that it would have continuously spawned Ghost Freddy's to temporarily stun enemies, just like the actual haunting move. Since the green chip quick start, party also temporarily stuns enemies at the beginning of a battle, it is very likely that curse, haunting was an early version of that chip. Similarly to the main series games, World was originally going to feature stars on the title screen once you complete all of the endings. However, these were cut, likely due to the large number of endings that you can achieve. There are actually two unused pieces of text that would have appeared when speaking to NPCs. The first one reads well, congratulations, you beat a fictional monster from a fictional game. Bravo, big deal. Since this fits the tone of the normal ending dialogue, it is likely that this was planned for that ending. The second unused piece of text was planned to appear during the interaction with 8-Bit Fredbear, where he would tell you to find the first clock. The cut dialogue reads if you keep following him, you will only finish a story. There is something more important for you to do. It is very likely that 8-Bit Fredbear is referring to Anim Dude, who he frequently refers to as the Puppet Master. Before Update 2, Nightmare Fredbear was given the move Bad Pizza, but Update 2 replaced it with Freddles, which was previously exclusive to Nightmare Freddy. The last unused image for Five Nights at Freddy's World is the Five Nights at Freddy's 4 box, but actually opened. It is very possible that Cawthon may have originally planned to reveal the contents of the box in this game, but this plan was scrapped and this was the last time that the box was ever brought up again. 
The last two unused features of World were pieces of audio removed from Update 2. The first was planned for the Foxy Fighters minigame, and is an unused voice clip for JJ, that would have played after Nightmare Chica's plane was shot down. This line was cut due to mild profanity, which you can listen to here. Now I'm going to kick your ass! Wait, what? I, I can't say that in the game. The other cut piece of audio was Chica's magic rainbow swearing after being defeated, which was removed in the 1.24 update. The next time you see a rainbow in the sky, that is me coming to your house! Damn it. Moving on to sister location, we can see that baby has a slightly different face design in the very first teaser. Just like Plush Drops teaser though, some of these differences may just be caused by the darker lighting, such as the earlier design's darker makeup and eyes. However, two very clear differences between the two designs, not caused by the lighting, are the eyelashes and teeth. Baby's earlier design has much longer eyelashes and doesn't seem to have teeth on its lower jaw two things that were obviously changed with her finalized design. One of the more infamous teased features that never made it into the game was the multiple Bidey Babs seen in their own teaser. In this teaser, we can see that there were originally going to be 7 Bidey Babs to deal with. However, in the actual game, we only ever see 2 Bidey Babs one of which was renamed Electro Bab in the custom night. One smaller. Less noticeable cut detail is from the teaser featuring Inad. Here, we can see that Inad was originally going to have red eyes. This was, of course, changed in the actual game, where he has blue and, occasionally, purple eyes. The last teaser for sister location that was changed during development was the first teaser for the custom night. In this teaser, we can see Bidey Bab in the vents, which is accurate to the actual game, but we can also see Bon Bon crawling through the vents as well. Of course, Bon Bon never appears in the vents in the custom night and is instead sent through the doorways by Funtime Freddy. This teaser may imply that Bon Bon was originally going to be able to come through the vents as well as the doors, but this feature was scrapped in order to avoid overcomplicating his mechanics. Moving on to unused features within the game, the first thing to mention is an early version of the primary control module. This early design is actually still in the game and can be seen in the blueprints section of the extras menu. The only major difference is that the vents were originally closed by metal bars, before they were replaced with actual doors. One rather strange unused image is a red tinted image of baby with her pigtails either obscured or missing. Interestingly, the MFA codes reveal that this was actually part of an early version of the game over screen. Another unused image depicts Balora staring through the left control module window, with her face plates open and the aerial is up. It is very likely that this was planned to appear when shocking Balora, due to the much brighter lighting. Even though Balora's face plates are open, her eyes are still closed, further proving that Balora only opens her eyes when attacking something. In the files, you can actually find what appears to be an early version of the map of Circus Baby's entertainment and rental. Since this is only a sprite of the map, it is possible that this was supposed to be overlaid when in certain rooms, as one version shows the entrance vent highlighted in blue. Bizarrely, a drawing of a smiley face can be found in the files. This was likely used as a placeholder for Michael Afton's reflection in the real ending, but it is still quite odd to find something like this in the files for a Five Nights at Freddy's game. The last pieces of unused content for sister location are some unused voice lines. The first of them is the female AI voice warning the player of high glass pressure within the circus gallery. The glass pressure trigger. Please do not push against the glass. This may indicate that there were plans for a section where the player would have to repair the window while dealing with by Bab or perhaps even Baby. Finally, there were several voice lines planned and recorded for Funtime Freddy that were scrapped. These consist mainly of different variations of lines already in the game, but there are a few new lines included as well. Some of these also reveal that Funtime Freddy was originally going to speak with a German accent, which was rejected. Here are all of Funtime Freddy's unused voice lines. Over there in the dark! Come on out! 
the birthday boy over there. We should give him a surprise. We'll see you next time. Well, hello again. Round two. Come on, Bon Bon. Let's not deceive our friend Wayne. <laughs> Come on, Bon Bon. Let's not keep our friend waiting. Anybody home? You sure? Okay. Let's go get him in three, two, one. Oh, what a party pooper. Oh, birthday boy. Come out, come out wherever you are. Moving on to Pizzeria Simulator, this section will be much shorter because there was actually no pre-release content that was cut from the game, mainly because Pizzeria Simulator received very little teasing in order to keep it as a surprise. So, let's go straight to the unused content found within the game's files. First of all, there is an extra blueprint that was planned for the insanity ending of the game. As we all know, the insanity ending shows us blueprints that reveal several things such as the scooper's mechanics and lefty's true purpose. However, there was one extra blueprint that never made it into the game. This blueprint shows Molten Freddy, and confirms that he is actually in it from sister location, after Baby was ejected and Funtime Freddy took control. We already found this out in the source codes of both SCOGames.com and FNAFWorld.com, so it doesn't really matter if this blueprint is canon or not, since its details have already been presented in one form or another. Something else that can be found in the files are what appear to be prototypes of Henry's cassette player's buttons. Here, we can see the buttons as 2D sprites before they were included in the cassette player's model. Speaking of the cassette player, there is an unused animation that implies that Henry's tapes were originally going to be reversible and fast forwardable. I'm assuming that these features were removed because there wouldn't be much of a reason to replay the tapes during salvages. The last two Cut sprites from Pizzeria Simulator are of a star and a play button. Since Ultimate Custom Night was originally planned as DLC for Pizzeria Simulator, this star may have been planned for it before it was expanded into its own game. As for the play button, it was likely planned for either the startup menu or for blueprint mode. Moving on to Ultimate Custom Night. Like I just mentioned, it was originally planned as DLC for Pizzeria Simulator, but the project grew so large that Cawthon decided to expand it into its own game. There are massive differences between the game's initial roster and its finalized roster. First of all, Ultimate Custom Night was originally planned to only have 40 animatronics, but this was later expanded to 50, plus DD in her secret roster. Secondly, Adventure in 001 and Candy Cadet were originally part of the roster, but they were later taken out and replaced with Withered Bonnie and Withered Chica. Also, Nightmare Freddy and the Freddles originally had their own slots, as well as the individual members of Trash and the Gang. Of course, these groups were merged into their own slots, and the roster was finally expanded to 50 slots. The final characters to be added were Phantom Mangle, Phantom Freddy, Phantom Balloon Boy, Nightmare Bonnie, Nightmare, Nightmarian, Nightmare Balloon Boy, Old Man Consequences, Funtime Foxy, Helpy, Ned Bear, Orville Elephant, and Molten Freddy. The final pre-release change was the default office. The only major changes are that the finalized office added in the Caterpillar toy from Five Nights at Freddy's 4 and moved the Freddy mannequin slightly to the right. Before we move on to unused assets, there were actually a few minor gameplay changes during development. After the first 50 characters were programmed into the game, Jack Ochica, Circus Baby, Nightmare Bonnie, Nightmare Mangle, and Phantom Freddy were slightly modified in order to be slightly harder. Jack Ochica originally could be stopped by the doors, 
regardless of the temperature in the actual game. She is not affected by the doors if the temperature is above 100 degrees. Circus Baby, Nightmare Bonnie, and Nightmare Mangle could originally be held back by the right door, but they were instead given the ability to break down the door if the player did not buy their plushies in time. Finally, Phantom Freddy's behavior was altered so that he would appear faster if the temperature was too high. Moving on to unused assets within the files, the text custom knight was originally planned to appear at the top of the selection screen. This was likely removed due to a lack of space, after the offices, challenges, and power-ups were added. When the game was first released, all of Torchica's animations were actually flipped horizontally. This was later fixed in the 1.021 update, but her flipped animations can still be found in the files. Originally, Rock's Torchica's sprite in the East Hall was just going to be her West Hall sprite, but flipped horizontally. This was, of course, replaced with a completely new sprite, which I think looks much better, but her original sprite can still be found in the files. Even though Bonnet has completely new animations in Ultimate Custom Night, the animation of her covering her nose from sister location can actually be found in the files. The most likely reason is that this was used as a placeholder during development. As we all know, Ultimate Custom Night was responsible for giving voices and personalities to several previous animatronics, such as Nightmarian, Funtime Foxy, Withered Bonnie, Jack Ochica etc. However, there were two more animatronics who were originally planned to have voices those two being Freddy Fazbear and Toy Bonnie. Voices.com listed Freddy's voice actor as Tim Simmons, the voice actor of Nightmare Freddy. However, his actual planned voice lines were recorded by Kellen Goff, the voice actor of Funtime Freddy and Milton Freddy. Meanwhile, Toy Bonnie was originally going to be voiced by Stephanie Berlinda Quinn the voice actor of DD. However, both of these characters' voices were scrapped, and Freddy's recorded lines were distorted and reused for Fredbear. Ironically, both of these characters would later get voices in special delivery, however, it is unknown who voiced them or if these are the same type of voices that were planned for Ultimate Custom Night. The final piece of unused content for Ultimate Custom Night is the demo reminder. If you didn't know, Prior to the game's release, a demo was sent to specific YouTubers, likely to get footage for the trailer. This demo was limited so that the highest possible score was 2000 points, probably so that Dorco couldn't practice 50-20 mode until the game was released. Despite Ultimate Custom Night being a free game, the demo reminder was still left in the files. Since both have quite a fair lot of unused content, I have decided to split Help Wanted and its DLC, Curse of Dreadbear, into two separate sections. Now, let's move on to Help Wanted. Starting with the game's box art, when it was first revealed, it garnered some controversy due to fan-made renders being used, specifically Funtime Foxy and Spring Bonnie. Cawthon apologized on Reddit and the full box art was later revealed with all of the fan renders replaced with official ones, and Spring Bonnie was replaced with Nightmarian. There will be more on Spring Bonnie in a few minutes. One of the more famous re-release changes, related to Help Wanted, is Nightmare Fredbear's color scheme. In the trailers and a pre-release screenshot, Nightmare Fredbear was incorrectly colored with Nightmare Freddy's color scheme, and was missing his buttons. The developers would later confirm that it was just a prototype model that was used, since the game needed to be promoted as soon as possible. Of course, Nightmare Fredbear was correctly colored in the actual game, but his prototype model can still be found on his action figure icon in the prize corner. The last pre-release difference is an early version of the cupcake. In the PAX East demo and some pre-release screenshots, the cupcake scene in the Five Nights One Office was actually a fan model, made by Super Cubin in 2015. Thankfully, just Nightmare Fredbear's early model, this was replaced with a new model that was more accurate to Korthan's actual design for the cupcake, 
Moving on to unused content within the files, perhaps the most well-known removed feature from Help Wanted is the Showtime stage performance and the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza theme song. Originally, the Showtime button in the main hub was supposed to unlock a stage performance, where the original four animatronics would sing a song called the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza theme. The song was very reminiscent of the songs that would have been sung by animatronics in real-life restaurants such as Chuck E. Cheese and showbiz pizza place, and this was going to be the very first time that we would hear the original three animatronics voices. Since Foxy had already been given a voice in Ultimate Custom Night, Freddy was once again voiced by Kellen Goff, Bonnie was voiced by Joe Gordt, the voice actor of Funtime Foxy, Mr. Hippo, and Rockstar Foxy, and Chica was voiced by Amber Lee Connors, the voice actor of Toy Chica. Unfortunately, Cawthon eventually decided to remove the performance from the game, as he wasn't fully satisfied with the animatronics voices. Evidently, the removal of the showtime was a last minute decision, as the button was still left in the game, although it now does absolutely nothing, and the entire song can still be found in the files. Returning to Spring Bonnie again, there are a few hints that he was originally planned to appear in the game. Like I mentioned before, he was originally featured on the box art before he was replaced with Nightmarian. Also, there is an unused texture map for Spring Bonnie in the files, further supporting this theory. I honestly wish that Spring Bonnie was actually featured in the game, since we had already seen Fredbear in Ultimate Custom Night so it would have been nice to see Spring Bonnie as well. It is possible that his role in the story was filled in by Glitchtrap instead, since his design is very similar to Spring Bonnie's. Speaking of Glitchtrap, there is an early version of his design in the files. Originally, his design was just a colorless version of Springtrap, with small stitch-like indents on its body. However, it is also possible that this was just a prototype and not Glitchtrap's originally planned design. Interestingly, blacklight versions of the main four animatronics were originally planned for the game. Of course, these are all based on the blacklight merchandise made by Funko. As you can see, almost all of them were fully textured, except for Foxy, who is completely white. It is unknown what role the blacklight animatronics would have had though. This next piece of cut content wasn't found in the files, but was actually found through a development note outside of the map of Mangle's vent repair stage. According to this note, there was originally going to be a vent in the ceiling that Mangle could crawl through. However, this was removed, likely because it would have made the stage too hard, especially in blacklight mode. Strangely, there is a small, roundish, doll-like model in the files, labeled as Toy Proxy. It is quite likely that Toy Proxy was used for AI testing for Foxy in the Five Nights 2 mode, since it can be difficult for the Unreal Engine 4 to have two separate AIs for the same model. In the files, there is actually a folder labeled Multiplayer, which contains files labeled Character Info, MP Game Mode, etc. This implies that the game was originally going to have a multiplayer mode, but it was unfortunately scrapped. Returning to the cupcake again, there is a much older texture map for it in the files. This older texture has purple frosting and its eyes are very reminiscent of the Funtime animatronic size. As we all know, the Freddle's only role in Help Wanted, prior to Curse of Dreadbear, was as distractions in the blacklight version of Freddy's parts and service stage. However, there are some unused animations that imply that they were originally planned to appear in the Night Terrors mode as well. There is an animation of a Freddle attacking you, and an animation of a Freddle hiding under the bed, similar to Five Nights at Freddy's 4. If the Freddles did appear in Night Terrors, it is likely that they would have appeared in Nightmare Fredbear's stage. Their attack animation was reused for build a mangle in Curse of Dreadbear but the second animation still went unused. As we all know, Phantom Balloon Boy's in-game model, very strangely, does not have any legs. However, what is even more bizarre is that, in the files, there is actually a completed version of Phantom Balloon Boy with legs. It is possible that the legless model was chosen in order to make him appear more ghostly though. Strangely, 
A photo of the Five Nights at Freddy's 2 map from the Freddy Files can be found in the Files of Help Wanted. It is possible that this may have been used as reference material for the developers when they were recreating the map for the Five Nights 2 mode. Speaking of the Five Nights 2 mode, as we all know, the withered animatronics were not in the game when it was first released, and they were added through an update. There are actually prototype models, in the files, of all of them. Besides Withered Freddy, these early models have the same body design, but lack textures entirely. The final piece of unused content for the Help Wanted is several images of animatronics and endoskeletons from Showbiz Pizza Place. Originally, this slideshow would have appeared on the monitor in the prize corner after pressing the red button inside the exotic butter's basket. These photos were actually taken by Aaron Fetcher, the creator of the Showbiz Pizza animatronics. However, Scott Cawthon decided to remove the slideshow from the game after several people were comparing the images to actual Showbiz Pizza Place photos. Moving on to Curse of Dreadbear, the first piece of information is that the DLC was originally titled Rise of Frank and Freddy, and the titular Dreadbear was originally named Frank and Freddy as a tribute to Frankenstein's monster. Even though both the character and DLC would be renamed, the original logo can still be found in the files. The only other pieces of pre-released content are two screenshots which show Dreadbear in the hallway crawl, a stage which he never makes an appearance in. This, along with another unused feature that I will mention next, may imply that Curse of Dreadbear was originally planned to have a blacklight mode, Moving on to unused content with the files, the first things to mention are slightly different versions of the Freddles. These versions have a very burnt, charred texture and, as a result, are commonly referred to as the burnt Freddles. Continuing with the theory that Curse of Dreadbear was originally going to have a blacklight mode, it is possible that the burnt Freddles would have appeared in Builder Mangle, since the normal Freddles act as distractions in that stage. This next piece of unused content is one that I only found out about after I had finished and recorded this script, so I had to quickly rewrite this section in order to accommodate for this cut feature, which is that Balloon Boy was originally going to have an attack animation. This would likely have been used in the trick or treat stage, since Balloon Boy is able to kill you if you don't put on the correct mask when he answers the door. However, this animation was cut likely because it wasn't scary enough. As a result, Balloon Boy just turns into Nightmare Balloon Boy when he attacks you in Trick or Treat. Ironically, Balloon Boy would actually get an attack animation in Special Delivery. One of my favorite pieces of unused content is an unused alert animation for Grim Foxy, which would have been used in the Corn Maze. In this animation, rather than raising his scythe, Grim Foxy stops in place and howls like a wolf. I honestly really like this animation and I wish that it was kept in the finished stage. The final piece of unused content for Curse of Dreadbear and, by extension, Help Wanted is the coming soon icons. When Curse of Dreadbear was first released, its stages were slowly released daily, with icons that displayed the release dates. Even after the DLC was released in its entirety, these icons can still be found in the files. This section for special delivery will be relatively short, since there was not much that was cut from the game. First of all, the teasers reveal a slightly different HUD design than in the actual game. The only differences are that the flashlight originally had an on, off caption and the remnant icon was originally a swirl. Perhaps the most infamous removed feature from special delivery is Plush Trap. As evidenced by several teasers and the official trailer, Plush Trap was originally going to be part of the game's initial roster, but was not featured at launch. In March of 2020, Illumix revealed that this was because the files for him were corrupted and they wanted to come up with a unique mechanic for him. Despite this, many of Plush Trap's assets can still be found in the files, along with assets for Funtime Freddy and Lefty, indicating that they will be added to the game at a later date as well. 
The last pre-release change from special delivery is that Scorching Chico originally had dark red eyes on her teaser, which were changed to orange when she was added to the game. Moving on to the first of two pieces of unused content within the game itself, Easter Bonnie originally had green eyes in a few instances. As a lot of us know, Easter Bonnie actually has blue eyes. However, when he was first added to the game, he actually had green eyes in a few areas, specifically in his workshop animation. This was later changed to his proper eye color. And now, Easter Bonnie has blue eyes all throughout Special Delivery. The only other feature that was cut from Special Delivery were several pieces of text, labeled as Faz Facts. Originally, the game was going to feature several facts about the lore, such as Fredbear's Family Dino being the first Fazbear location and the Funtime animatronic having claws inside of their stomachs. If these facts were included in-game, they would have likely been included in the game over screen, similarly to Help Wanted's game over screen texts. Moving on to the most recent game. Freddy in Space 2, I am only going to cover unused content within the actual files. If I went over all of the pre-release content, then this video would be much longer. First of all, there are two unused enemy sprites. One of them is a human with a devious face, and the other is a tornado. These were likely just placeholders or test enemies. Some unused sprites include two flowers and two Lego bricks. As for the flowers, they would likely have been used for the stellar pit dimension, while it is unknown that the Lego bricks would have been used for. Finally, there were a lot of alpha sprites for enemies and bosses, such as the FOX tank, Ghost Freddy, Mechiplier, etc. With many of these, the only difference was more or less frames for animations. Thank you for watching this video. This honestly took a very long time to make as I am now doing my A levels in school and had less opportunities to work on this video. So, apologies for any large gaps between discussion videos. Though I will try to keep uploading gameplay videos to stick to my upload schedule of once a week. Also, thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel. At the time of writing and editing this video, it is the second anniversary of my channel on the 23rd of September. This video will likely be finished after the 23rd, but I will still consider this video to be a celebration of the second anniversary. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. And please subscribe if you would like to stay up to date with my newest uploads. Thank you for watching.